reports, right? So when it comes to search term report, my personal take on that is I have a few ground rules. Ground rule number one, when it comes to negative keywords, I have a cost per click where I feel like I need to monitor a keyword. So let's say an account has an average CPC of a dollar. Any keyword costing more than a dollar, even if it gets one click, I want to see what keyword that is because, you know, these add up. So you might find 10 keywords to make negative and it saves you $10 a week, let's say. But on the other hand side, I also like to focus on the 80-20 rule where I look for 20% of those negatives that end up costing 80% of my wasted budget and vice versa on the positive keywords, so to say, or the long tail keywords. But in terms of search term reports, the, the use of that tool has been decaying over time because of automation, right? Automation has made it easier to manage them. Uh, do you recommend any specific filters or any specific uh, um, to-do list for anybody that might be wanting to run a search term report? I mean, I think it's, I mean, I think you, you, you're very good at in terms of like the 80-20. Um, I mean, I think where, where I've sort of found, I mean, because a PMAX campaigns does, is a black, still a relatively black box doesn't give much insights in terms of what people are searching for and particularly i think when we start talking industries um when we're going into sort of broader industries we can we can go more exact and we can do a lot more sort of i would say like upfront research to sort of get things going without needing to expose ourselves too much in terms of a, a negative keyword list. We don't have to go in with broad. And while say we go into a very niche category with very few searches. And I mean, this search term report, you can both see in, in, in the keyword planner, but you will also be able to see in terms of simple uh, organic searches. Uh, sort of combining SEO and SEM, but um, it, I've, I've used broad and it's particularly there. I, I go broad because I don't actually know what the end user is searching for because it could be a, an abundance of variations. Um, so it's actually in terms of, I guess, rules, I've, I've very much used more industry uh, where I know sort of say e -com, I go very specific and more detailed up front. Um, I have a relatively clear negative keyword list that I wanted to set up um, up front to, to avoid that as well in terms of <laughs> seeing them appearing in the, in the search, uh, search query report, uh, which is like, <laughs> you can do it either, the, either way around. Um, either you set up free uh, as a negative keyword and sort of add that towards all your campaigns, <laughs> Or you allow that to sort of appear on your search, like so your search query report, and um, inside. And um, um, so I think it, it very much. There's I think like there's no still no golden rule that I've found that sort of works best. I think it's bigger industries where there's a lot of queries and a lot of information up front. A lot more pre work can be done. Yeah. Um, well, something that is more niche. Um, that don't have that many search queries and you can't do that much you know, pre-work and therefore you need to enter sort of a discovery phase. And, and almost like if, if you work with, I mean, it's either it's your own budget uh, or a, a client's budget, I think it's very clear that you need to communicate also this to clients that, hey, this is the situation we're in and why we are doing this for the X amount of period is because things will get better. Um, and up until now, no one has done this for you. Uh, so there's no data, there's, there's no legacy, there's nothing we can actually look back at and see. 